We're here this evening with Suzanne Farron, whose music will be performed by the Bergamot Quartet on Friday, May 6, at 7.30 p.m. at Stanton Reformed Church in Stanton, New Jersey, in the rolling hills of Hunterdon County in western central New Jersey. And that concert will be streamed uh, starting the following day for about one week. And you can find out all the information and get tickets at the website raritanrivermusic.org. Suzanne, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Nice to see you, Michael. Please tell us something about the music that we're going to be hearing tomorrow from the quartet. Well, um, it's a older work. It's already 12 years old. Um, so I sort of feel like I was a different person at that moment. But when I hear it, especially played by the Bergamonts there, they really bring me back and remind me that I was also myself, even then, you know. Um, and when I was working on the piece, I was really inspired by some colleagues that I had at my institution at the time, um, Purchase College. And so each mm, sort of, there's several small movements um, that are kind of tied together. And there's four interspersed that are for each one of the quartet members that I was writing for. It's Lori Smuckler, Cal Wiersma, Julia Lichten, and um, who am I forgetting? Lori Smuckler, Cal <laughs> Wiersma, Ira Weller. And I'm having a problem. Well, we'll check back <laughs> with you on number four. <laughs> no, Did, what, what, I have was, <laughs> well, was I quick, like that. <laughs> quick, uh, 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 Google it while we're talking. No, what, no. what was the name of the group? Did did they have an official? They were they were um, they were sort of uh, put together at the time uh, by yeah, by the Conservatory of Music. Um, so who could I possibly forgetting? Lori and Ira, they're married. They're in the quartet. Julia Lichten is the cellist, and Cal Wiersma. There's four. Oh, good, good. And they, like, yeah, no, no one more important than the other, but I don't know who I even forgot. So there you go. That's the whole group. <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to be texting them as soon as we're done to <laughs> make sure they're paying attention. So was that a commission at the time? It was kind of, yeah, it was a commission, actually. It was a commission by uh, SUNY. Um, they had some money for artistic projects. And I was really, I love all four of them as players and artists and everything. So I I was very enthusiastic about making a piece for them. I had already written a solo for Cal and Julia. So um, it was nice to get to work in the quartet. That, that idea of having solo movements interspersed with the other ones, yeah. sounds like it gives so much variety to the work. Was that yeah. something that that you did because you thought, oh, uh, I want more variety, or was there another reason that it? Yeah, I think up I was attracted way? to that. I well, firstly, I really like to think about people. I like, you know, I even like my sort of escape is historical fiction late at night, you know, and I like reading about people and how they lived and what they did, and kind of, I like thinking about. I like thinking about people. I like, and and one of the ways in which I generate music is thinking about the performers that I'm writing for and what they're good at, what they, how they move when they play, um, the kind of sound world that they create. I made, um, I asked also for them, their thoughts about poetry and uh, wow. that was, in, yeah. So there were some, some things that were really directly inspired by their thoughts and, um, I, I like to be inspired by that connection. Mm -hmm. And a piece that I like are the 10 pieces for Woodwind Quintet by Ligeti. I think I was, that was a piece that I was probably listening to a lot of the time, but that, you know, around that decade, I was sort of deeply into that music and really liked the way in which he sort of featured an instrument um, throughout the 10 pieces and how that felt like it gave this kind of momentum and variety. 
Is this the kind of thing that you think audience members should know about, should not know about, benefit at all from knowing the inner workings, what, what goes on in the composer's mind, the inspiration? You know, I hope that it's not necessary, and I also hope that it's enjoyable to know when when that happens. I can't remember what the program note says. It might say all of that. Um, but I hope that, you know, for people who are curious, it's maybe nice to go deeper into what people are thinking, what they, you know, what I think I'm doing in a piece of music is not the only thing that happens in that piece of music. So I also really like to let things sit with listeners and with musicians and kind of hear from them about what their experience is with this music, because I'm just one part of that, hopefully. Yeah, from a performer's point of view, I always want to know what the composer had in mind. What was, what were mm -hmm. they living at the time? Mm -hmm. What were their inspirations? But I know some composers who don't really want me to know. They, they want me yeah. to discover the music on my own as a performer. And then uh, if there's something that, that they don't like about it, they, they can let me know. But they want the performers to, to come to it fresh. I really, though, love knowing what was behind it. Because I figure, as a performer, my voice is, is simply to express what the composer has to say. And so with a group like Bergamot, where they're doing a whole program of music written, yours is probably the oldest, yeah. uh, except for the Mendelssohn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're definitely working with the composers and, and right there uh, at the, the very beginning of the creation. Mm. I think it really, isn't it up to you? I mean, I don't think it's up to a composer to decide how much you get to know about <laughs> the music I mean your process is your process and it's um I can imagine some performers maybe like to divorce encountering a piece of music from a biography or from a context but what's the harm yeah, yeah. I read once that Mahler after uh spending 10 years revising and revising his programmatic uh, writing about the second symphony finally decided do not print any of this uh, it none of it should go in the program <laughs> to just let the people hear it yeah I mean that is um, that's where the composer has a little bit more control I think if you actually write your own program note you probably should be happy with it and you probably think that it should go along with the piece when someone you know, experiences it, especially for the first time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular you would suggest that people listen for, uh, especially if they're hearing this piece for the first time? I wonder, I, you know, I would be curious to, to hear what people might think about um, different musical personalities that happen throughout the piece, because I was definitely writing in a kind of frame of mind of contrasts. So those occur a lot. And I was thinking about older dance forms um, when I was writing. So maybe that comes through. And if it does, I'd be curious to hear, you know, which ones and if they, if that's if that's an experience that people have when they hear this piece yeah that sounds good uh, of course we wish you could be there and speak to the audience at the reception afterwards uh to get that information yourself but yes we we know you're not able to attend uh tanya leon is going to be on an airplane charlie oh. charlie peck is uh busy in philadelphia just down the road from us Wow. But but as long as the quartet shows up, uh, <laughs> we're going to be in really good shape. Yeah, they're the important ones. So Suzanne, thank you immensely for spending the time with us today and, sure. and giving us those composer insights uh, that I think are so helpful for us listening to the music. No problem. It's a pleasure. Thanks okay. for having me. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye. You too. Take care.